In 1955, the French had another revolution, only this time on the roads. The Citroën DS is not just my dream car, but for me, quite possibly the greatest car ever made. And today, I'm gonna to get the chance to take this beautiful DS23 for a drive to explain why. But first, our friends at Lancaster Insurance are running monthly giveaways. You can win all sorts, from experience days to tools, restaurant vouchers, and tech. So click the link below at the end of the video to enter their latest competition. The Traction Avant have proved quite the success for Citroen. It was advanced, remarkably comfortable, and it had introduced the hatchback to the car world. Replacing it then was no mean feat. Citroen was so keen that the new car be striking and cutting edge like the Traction Avant had been before it, that they brought in two heads of design. Flaminio Bertoni, an Italian sculptor, not to be confused with the other Bertoni, and a French aeronautical engineer, André Lefebvre. Now you might think with one sculptor and one engineer involved that they'd have conflicting opinions, that one would want a classically beautiful, stylish shape, and the other something advanced that could cut through the air as aerodynamically as possible. But the net result was, we got both. Look at the profile of the DS. Look at that tapered teardrop shape that cuts through the air and is acknowledged to be as aerodynamic as possible. But then look at some of the details for the design. Those chrome flutes that run along the roof with the indicators in them. That art deco shaped rear window and those rear lights. It's a gorgeous bit of design that's just as functional as it is about four. It only got more gorgeous in 1967 when Robert Opron facelifted the DS to include headlights integrated into the wings. The DS, for me at least, is flawless. It manages to be glamorous but not attention seeking and modest but not anonymous. I know I'm gushing a little bit here but the truth is I've got a poster of one of these on my bedroom wall. I genuinely adore the way this car looks. And Citroen obviously agreed because they gave it a name befitting of its beautiful styling. DS is actually a pun because in French that's pronounced DS which is the French word for goddess. Seems appropriate don't you think? And indeed, when Citroen revealed the car at the 1955 Paris Motor Show, you'd be forgiven for thinking that it was the second coming. People flocked to the DS, with 700 people ordering one in the first 15 minutes. By the end of day one, Citroen had taken 12,000 deposits for DSs, which makes it a day one sales record that took over 60 years to beat. Now, the public at the Paris Motor Show were wowed by the styling, understandably so but the DS was far from all style and no substance. In fact, this was a cutting edge car in its day. For a start, the DS was built on what's called base unit construction. Essentially, the skeleton of the car is its strength, is a monocoque without a separate chassis. And that means that all the body panels hung on it are just decoration. You can actually drive a DS with no body panels and no roof. And those body panels themselves were clever too. A number of them were fiberglass and aluminium to keep the weight as low as possible and to keep what weight there is low down in the car for better weight distribution and that base unit chassis had its technology too. It featured crumple zones, which meant if the car was in an accident, the car itself would absorb the energy normally taken on by the occupants. The steering column was designed to collapse in a front end collision to stop the driver being impaled by the steering wheel. And the engine is designed to submarine under the passengers in the event of an accident. And the safety features kept on coming. Michelin's tyre with Citroen meant the DS came on radial tyres. The front brakes were inboard, which was a first on a production car and made for better weight distribution. What's more, those brakes were power assisted, which means you didn't have to jam your foot into the floor to get the car to stop. The steering was power assisted too, and it got lighter the faster you got. Then there's the gearbox. You can see that it's a column manual, I keep shifting as I'm driving along, but it's a clutchless semi-automatic. There's only two pedals down here. Now those power brakes, the power steering, and that semi-automatic gearbox all came in line with the suspension. Part of Citroen's revolutionary technology, hydro pneumatic. The heart of the Citroen system is a high pressure hydraulic pump, driven by the engine like a power steering pump. The pump distributes pressurised LHM or liquid hydraulic mineral fluid and it's engaged and disengaged 
by a solenoid operated clutch. Hydraulic fluid under pressure is stored in an accumulator sphere from where it can be drawn off as required from a hydraulic ring main running around the car. Each suspension arm is attached to a push rod with a sphere on one end and a piston on the other end moving in a cylinder. Fluid can pass from the sphere into the cylinder according to the position of the height control device while pressurized nitrogen gas in one half of these spheres provide the spring effect. A shock absorber effect is achieved by using restriction between the cylinder and the sphere itself. And the upshot of that hydro pneumatic suspension is that the DS is fully self-leveling. Doesn't matter how mental you go at the fromagerie, the whole car will stay level. It's also height adjustable, so you can lower it down for better handling or raise it up to get over a rutted field that two CVs are crossing. But how does all that technology and all that engineering translate to the road? Well, it's wonderful. That power steering is phenomenal, it's so light. I drove here today in my brand new Mini, and honestly, the steering in that is heavier than in this. The brakes are incredibly powerful. There isn't your traditional swing away pedal, there's just a little stubby mushroom in the floor. Stamp on the brakes hard, and this car will lock up. The brakes are incredibly powerful. Now, the DS is not a sharp sports saloon, but the trade-off is the ride, which is simply phenomenal. You've heard all these old cliches about magic carpet riding Citroëns, and honestly, it's completely true. The owner tells me that this car is actually on CX front spheres, and that means it's riding firmer than it should. But honestly, I'm not sure I believe him. It just floats down the road. There's no indication that the wheels are even moving. That hydro-pneumatic technology means that all four wheels are permanently in contact with the road, so there's no hopping and skipping over rutted surfaces. Speed bump, 30 miles an hour. I could have had an open drink here and not spilt it. It's just phenomenal. That incredibly soft, floaty ride, combined with these soft leather seats that honestly are like armchairs. And a small wonder this road test is being delivered without quite my usual franticness. It's more stressful to be in a bath than it is to waft along in this thing. Three fingers on the wheel just to guide it along. Let the world pass you by. For post-war France, the DS was a symbol of ingenuity, a symbol of hope, a symbol of what France could do. Small wonder the DS lived a 20-year life, and in that time sold 1.45 million units. I can't think of a single car before or since, really, that represented quite such a step forward, so much progress, that did so much to further the car. Almost every car built after the DS owes something to it. And as if the tech spec wasn't enough, the DS built up quite the biography as well. That soft suspension and its compliance over rough surfaces made it a remarkably capable rally car. It won the Monte Carlo rally twice and it won the Thousand Lakes rally. It's got political provenance too. That self-leveling suspension means the car can drive on less than four wheels, which was ideal when President Charles de Gaulle's would-be assassins shot out two tyres on his DS. He was still able to get away completely unharmed and said later on that the DS saved his life. It doesn't matter what aspect of cars you're interested in. Design, safety, engineering, motorsport. The DS did something to further all of those causes. Small wonder that even nearly 70 years on from when it was released, it still comes top of many beautiful cars lists, innovative cars lists, and greatest cars lists. It cemented Citroen's reputation as quirky innovators, a company that weren't afraid to be different and try something new. Many advanced cars aren't actually that pleasant to drive because they're too hung up on doing something new. But the DS, even today, holds up in spectacular fashion. It's a wonderful thing to drive, and if, like me, this is your dream car, you will not be disappointed. Some people say you shouldn't meet your heroes, but they're wrong. I can highly recommend you meet them. They're every bit as brilliant as you think they are. So there you have it. Hope I've done my bit to show you that the Citroen DS could well be the greatest car ever.
This video is proudly sponsored by Lancaster Insurance. Give them a call on 01480 400 889 for an insurance quote on your classic car. And don't forget to click the link below to enter their latest competition.